Hello everyone, my name is Rio Kubota, I'm a CEO of Diagentix and I would like to start scientific online lecture for designing loop-mediate isothermal amplification lamp and assimilating probes. There are numerous number of disease caused by microorganisms throughout the world. Many are severe and often deadly and costly to treat. Highly infectious pathogens are of great concern. For example, as we all know that the recent and ongoing outbreak of coronavirus. Therefore, quick, accurate, and low-cost diagnostic tools can help to expedite treatment and minimize spread. We've been working on developing mobile molecular diagnostic tool which can be used in the field, on-site, or extremely remote settings. We focus on molecular diagnostics, which means DNA or RNA sequence specific it should be simple, rapid, and inexpensive, as well as sensitive. The tool is supposed to be used in the field or a low resource setting, therefore the device are designed to use minimum energy. Here in the picture, one of our co-founder, uh, Dr. Jenkins, holding our second generation prototype in the field. Considering these requirements, we think isothermal DNA or RNA amplification technology are suitable too for rapid molecular diagnostics. Each isothermal amplification technology needs specially designed primers and or processes, and some utilize unique DNA polymers with strand displacement activity, and also different enzymes and cofactors. The gold standard molecular diagnostic technology is polymerase chain reaction, PCR, but what are isothermal DNA amplification technologies? They are designed to replicate DNA or RNA under isothermal condition. That means unlike PCR, they do not require the cycle of temperature fluctuations. And this is significant because even the uh, lithium ion battery technology has improved over the last decade in order to support thermal cycling and continuously performing testing PCR needs secure access to electric supply. And also engineering design becomes more complex, therefore the device can be more expensive. Here is an example of our first prototype, which is designed to perform isothermal DNA amplification. It is built on open source prototyping platform, Arduino. Low power is the most important key element Therefore, isothermal amplification can be performed by a very simple setting like hot bath. The speed is another advantage because they often utilize much faster DNA polymerase compared to PCR's TAC DNA polymerase. But the speed of PCR is basically controlled by how quickly thermal cycling can be achieved. Therefore, isothermal technologies are a more suitable tool for point of care use. We've reviewed many isothermal technology, and we've been mainly developing LAMP application for the last 10 years. LAMP stands for Root Mediated Isothermal Amplification. It is developed by Japanese pharmaceutical company Aiken Chemical 20 years ago. LAMP was described in detail and primer designing software was available at that time, and also all the components for the reaction were available from suppliers. The characteristic of LAMP are the reaction temperature is around 65 degrees, which eliminates the need for denaturing double strand DNA. It requires four specially designed primers and utilizes DNA polymers with strand displacement activity. Additional primer called loop primers are described as optional, but in order to create robust reaction, it is essential. I would like to explain more details on each point for next a couple of slides. Around 65 degrees, double strand DNAs are under dynamic equilibrium condition, which means they are partially double stranded and single stranded. Therefore, lamp primers can anneal into their target sites and it does not require the denaturing step like PCR. Lamp requires four specially designed primers and six different primer annealing sites. 
the color coordination indicate the primer sequences. Of the primers which are called F3, B3 are like PCR primer, but inner primer which FIP and BIP are specially designed and consist of two primer regions. Another fundamental characteristic is that LAMP utilizes DNA polymerase with strong displacement activity. This polymerase lacks 5' prime to 3' prime exonucleus activity, and unlike TAC DNA polymerase, it can displace downstream DNA and continuously elongate and replicate new strands. Initially, the reaction time of LAMP was 16 minutes. However, more high speed and efficient enzymes were engineered and commercially available now. Therefore, the reaction time can be set around 20 to 45 minutes, depends on primer design. Optimization of reaction time is important because overexposure for the reaction condition induces false positive. This is a scheme of lamp reaction and can be divided into two processes. The first process is uh, initiation process, which utilizes all four primers to work together in order to create the dumbbell-like structure product. This dumbbell-like structure is the key component for the successful lamp reaction. The second process is ex exponential amplification process, which only utilizes FIP and BIP in the primers and also loop primer against dumbbell structure product, and it starts ultra-fast exponential amplification process. The animation of this process is available on Aiken Chemicals website. Besides fundamental full primer set, the additional primer called loop primer can be designed in the loop region. And by using loop primer, as you can see, the reaction can be accelerated significantly. Loop primer is not just accelerating the process. It's actually enhancing and making the re uh, reaction more robust. As you can see on gel electrophoresis picture here, a typical ladder like bonding pattern of lamp amplicons. The intensity of signals are much more stronger from the reaction with loop primer compared to the reaction without loop primer. Since lamp produce much more amplicons than PCR, the byproduct of DNA amplification, which is magnesium pyrophosphate, accumulates more and eventually start to precipitate. And you can see as white turbidity. Exact same process happen in PCR, but the white turbidity will not be observed from PCR. Loop primer also affect to not only the speed and intensity, but also the sensitivity of the reaction. We think the loop primers are essential for lamp if the application is considered for practical use. So how can we design lamp primers? The most common one is the Primer Explorer, which is available from Aiken Chemical website. The software is improved significantly now, so it is much easier to use compared to before. But the length of the software can calculate at one time is um, 2000 base pair. So if you are looking for primer set for longer gene sequence, you have to basically divide into the sections and apply to the software separately. I'm not going through step by step here, but the important parameter to design lamp primer sets are similar to PCR primers. Melting temperature, free energy of last five to six prime, uh, base of priming site, GC content of target and primer. And the distance is also important to generate good loop dumbbell structure, and this will affect the speed of lamp reaction. Since lamp utilize many primer, it's also important to have primers which don't interact each other and start to self-amplify. And lastly, additional primer called loop primers are important for robust reaction. LAMP has negative reputation for producing false positive, but the cause are from primer design and also carry over contamination. Since LAMP requires six to eight different target sites, there will be at least two different melting temperatures. Sounds really complicated, but the software can take care of it. It is important to understand the mechanism of lamp 
and also how melting temperature was set because essentially melting temperature and the primer concentration are factors which control the behavior of primer in the reaction mix. So it depends on the target GC content, melting temperature has different range of optima optimal temperature. Also make sure to put information like salt concentration. Uh, one thing I want to highlight here is that concentration of magnesium ion uh, which affect drastically for lamp reaction. I initially set the magnesium concentration as 8 mmol and optimized between 4 to 10 mmol. So after you have working primer set, uh, I highly recommend to check on magnesium concentration as well. So like PCR, it's very important for primer to have strong annealing to its target site. Therefore, a free energy toward the end of primer is very important. If the delta G value is more than uh, negative 4, eliminate those primer set unless you don't have other uh, choices. For F1C and B1C primers, it's important to check on their 5 prime end because the primer will be flipped around by loop structure and work as 3 prime end. Uh, also follow general guideline for PCR primer design. For example, GC clamp is effective, but not to have more than three consecutive GC at the end. I've already mentioned about GC content on earlier slides, and the software has improved significantly, so it does not generate as many primer candidate as before, but to narrow down the candidate primer set, you can actually change the setting of Primer Explorer. For the target with normal GC content, change the parameter to 50 to 60% and also to shorter the distance between F2 and B3 vision, which eventually will result in faster lamp reaction. For GC rich and edge rich target, change the GC rate and also melting temperature value. It doesn't guarantee the primer set will work better and it always needs to be tested and evaluated but these change will narrow down the number of candidate primer sets. It is important to understand which regions of target is responsible to lamp polygon structure. Uh, amplified region is between F2 and B2. Root region are between F2 to the beginning of F1 and the target region is from F1 to B1C. If the target region is shorter, the reaction gets faster. Another important parameter is dimer check, delta G value for primer dimer. There's not much we can change, but if you have many candidates, then higher number of delta G value is considered to be better. I will explain primer dimer issue later in this presentation, but if your reaction have primer dimer issue, there is a way to examine and improve. Again, uh, loop primer are described as additional primer, but I highly recommend to design in the beginning. Irrestimation might be a bit off, but this figure shows where the loop primer binds. So the general guidance of designing lamp primers uh, this is again similar to PCR primer design. Just plug in your target sequence and click to see what will happen. Um, if there are no primer set got generated, then change the parameter to less stringent con condition. If you have another region to design, uh, I will also search around other regions. Once you started to design LAN primer set, you see many primer set within a certain area. Treat these as a group and pick one of design that you consider it's good based on parameter. Uh, it is important to have working primer set first, then you can improve the performance later by looking to the detail. But at this point, uh, find the primer set which can amplify the target first. Like PCR, 
The theory and parameter can control the design, but it's always important to experiment and assess the performance. This depends on the budget and the number and length of your target, but I usually pick three to five primer sets per region and check them whether it can amplify the target or not. Again, I design loop primer at initial designing stage and assess them together. Once you have working primer, make sure whether loop primers are improving the reaction or not. If it's not improving, it's unnecessary to include them in the reaction, just increasing the risk of false positive. So when you're assessing the primer set, please uh, use real-time instrument whether it's amplifying or not. Add intercalating dye in the reaction mist and do not open the reaction tube after the reaction. Never. Unless you really want to see the ladder like bonding pattern on the gel or apply amplicon for sequencing to make sure the target regions are amplified or not. So as I mentioned earlier, lamp has negative reputation for high false positive. Uh, we are so familiar with PCR so opening up the tube top sounds like not a big deal, but lamp amplicon produce a lot more compared to PCR. So if you understand the mechanism of lamp, the lamp amplicon are highly reactive to FIP and BIP primer because of the dumbbell-like structure. So opening up the reaction tube with lamp amplicon means you will be contaminating your work environment. Globes, tube rocks, pipettes, the surface of, of your workbench. Once you create a carryover contamination issue, it will burn your time a lot and it's really difficult to resolve it. Once you have primer set, but it tends to generate false positive from a negative control, uh, refine the primer design. Uh, but make sure you follow the recommended reaction time. Do not go over time. A longer exposure to the reaction condition will surely create false positive. So I'm using usually GSP SSD polymerase from Optigenes or BSD 2.0 enzyme from New England Biolab. The reaction time is set around 60 minutes and I won't go over more. Uh, if reaction is ultra fast, like you can get amplification within five minutes or so, then I would make reaction time even shorter. Um, I think it's important to optimize the reaction time as well, uh, as the concentration of target DNA is closer to detection limit. Lamp reaction becomes more random. It takes off random time. Some takes off a bit faster, some later, some stay negative. So it's just the nature of lamp. So, but you have to really distinguish whether it's false positive or it's truly negative. The causes of false positives are considered for two reasons, uh, unless it's from carryover contamination. Uh, one is primer dimer, and the other is uh, primer secondary structure. I will explain how we can check primer dimer and the secondary structure. Since lamp utilizes many primers, it's important to assess which primer is causing issues. Uh, make combination of two primer and leave them at room temperature for 30 minutes prior to expose to reaction mixture and reaction temperature. Observe whether two primers can start to generate dimer or not. Uh, TT stands for threshold time. It's a similar indicator for CT value from uh, real-time PCR. So define how you want to calculate threshold time and use as indicator for when reaction starts. Next experiment is removing one primer from reaction and observe the false positive. In this scenario, you can see the removing B3 primer reduce the false positive, which implies that B3 primer can be the cause of false positive. So go back to your notebook or files and check on B3 primer sequence. Add or eliminate nucleotide at the end, could be it's 3 prime n or 5 prime n, or design a new B3 primer. 
uh, this point theory might not guide you for a better result but you have to keep trial and error for the secondary structure uh, apply problematic primers to secondary so structure uh, prediction software like Enfold and see how it will generate a second structure or not. Um, check on delta G, free energy value, and modify your sequence. And at this point, you have to really try and then see the result, whether it's improving the false positive issue or not. Initially, LAMP was promoted that result can be assessed by white byproduct turbidity. However, it leads to higher detection limit and also difficult to distinguish by eyes. So using intercalating dye is ideal, but as you know from real-time PCR experience, um, sequence-specific probe technology is the ideal confirmation and monitoring technology. Uh, as I mentioned, gel electrophoresis and post-reaction analysis are not recommended at all because it will create carryover contamination problems. So for real-time monitoring of sequence-specific technology, a molecular beacon were considered to be used for LAMP. However, um, LAMP reaction is 65 degree and it's not the ideal uh, condition for molecular beacon. So we came up uh, with a simulating probe technology. Uh, it consists of two different strands which share long complement sequence and one strand contain loop sequence toward the three prime end and the flow for molecule is attached on five prime end. The complement sequence has quencher molecule attached on its three prime end and it designed to anneal even higher temperature as you can see from the graph, so the lamp reaction temperature flow for is will be still quenched by uh, another uh, strand. Since one of the strand of assimilating probe contain loop primer sequence, it also work as a loop primer. A DNA polymerase used for lamp has strand displacement activity. So it will eventually turn back by using loop structure and remove the quencher strand and in result we generate the flow for signals. So a simulating probe will be a part of lamp amplicon. Therefore we named as a simulating. So advantage of using a simulating probes are it's sequence specific. Therefore it will reduce false positive. There are several other benefits like maintain close reaction environment which intercalating dye can provide but because of the nature of how intercalating dye works uh, it actually slower the speed of lamp reaction a little bit. Uh, a simulating probe does, doesn't affect its speed and another unique characteristic of a simulating probe is multiplexing application. So having two different flow for probes with two sets of lamp reaction, uh, lamp can be performed as duplex or triplex reaction. These are examples of multiplex lamp with assimilating probes. Uh, RS, is RS is stands for Rastonia Soranaslam, which is a plant pathogen and typing of this pathogen can be very important, especially for uh, R3B2 strains, which is RAID3 BioBar2 strains, are commonly known as vector wilt of potato. So there are two uh, lamp reactions, one for Rastonia species lamp, and uh, other is Rastonia RAID3 BioBar2 lamp reaction. Uh, another example of duplexing uh, lamp reaction with salmonella lamp and its internal control, control reaction. So you can find other published study for multiplexing lamp reaction, but the major drawback is lamp is it's so powerful. So two reaction will start competing and sac sacrifice the sensitivity. 
and also using so many primer in one reaction uh, it's really hard to optimize the reaction so technically it's possible but unless you have really good purified um, template DNA a multiplexing might be a difficult application to develop to the so before we talk about sample prep technique, I would like to introduce a little bit about our com company uh, called Diagenetics. Uh, we manufacture a handheld inexpensive low power isothermal amplification device called BioRanger. Um, it utilizes mobile phone technology so you can control BioRanger from your phone through your app and can record for amplification carbs, um, take a picture, record GPS location information, and then combine it together and share with others. We've been also working on developing in-house freeze-dried, uh, ready-to-use kit, uh, and it's getting ready to release, and also working on dashboard system that the information you collect from BioRanger and it will be stored in your phone, but we will we are creating cloud server to integrate all the information and ba basically visualize where the diseases are on the map. So BioAtlas is an online server that utilizes a GIS to document the location of bio biological agent over time. Users can personalize and create custom maps. Uh, spatial data can be graphically combined with relevant environmental data like temperature or wind direction. And by combining layers, BioAtlas allow users to explore a critical important question regarding the spread of or contaminants of biological threat. So I would like to talk about sample prep technique. Um, unfortunately, there is not the universal method for sample preparation since based on the sample type, preparation protocol will be different. Uh, molecular detection technology is well developed and established, but there is a huge disconnection of applying them to practical use because of sample preparation. Uh, I can show how how some example of how we applying lamp for different sample types, like plants, insects, uh, for food safety purpose, and also water quality testing. So for plant sample, uh, one of advantage of lamp reaction is its robustness. A DNA polymerase can often tolerate the effect from inhibitory molecule compared to PCR. So it depends on the sample, but the lamp can detect the target by simply crushing the plant tissue. Um, for geranium plant on this picture, these parts were sampled, crushed in the tube, and directly applied for lamp reaction. Uh, in this case, top leaf and petiole, petiole part was show positive. And it also related how pathogen moves around in the, in the plant. A rastone is considered to be infected from its root system or wound and the pathogen moves systemically within the plant. So uh, in this case, the top leaf pedio is the best sample if we want to detect rastonia from geranium plants. On the right side, picture shows also how potato plant was prepared and we were able to detect directly from plant, uh, potato plant. So in general, sample preparation is not designed to perform outside of laboratory. Uh, it's just the nature of sample. Often target microorganisms are highly dispersed in the sample. Uh, the scenario is likely to find a needle in haystack. So common detection limit for molecular diagnostic is around 10 to 3 to 10 to 4 because the volume of diagnostic reaction is pretty small, like 25 microliter, but the sample volume is actually much higher. Uh, therefore, 
concentration technique like immunomagnetic separation or centrifugation was applied or utilize an enrichment medium to enhance the growth of target organism has been used. We've been trying to develop this method to be performed in minimum resource setting. Uh, this is one of the example that we utilize thermos and phase change material. Uh, phase change material can store and release thermal energy. Ice cube is, for example, ice cube is phase change material. Uh, ice absorbed heat energy and it melts. But the temperature falls, heat energy is released to the environment, which ice builds up. Uh, we know ice water temperature is maintained at zero degree. So we utilize the same concept and design a special uh, paraffin wax as phase change material. So this phase change uh, paraffin wax can maintain the temperature for desired range. This non-instrument incubator needs only hot water and the inside of cylinder will maintain temperature around 37 degree, which is appropriate to perform short enrichment incubation. So this is one of simplified sample to result flow even original targets are highly dispersed or extremely low populated. This uh, enrichment method can be applied for water quality testing as well. Talking about water quality testing, uh, for sample preparation, uh, filtration technique is most commonly used, but we are developing uh, and try to utilize electrically generated micro bubble to capture and float up the dispersed uh, contaminant in the water. Uh, this work has been done in at University of Hawaii and Clemson University. So electroflotation system is uh, before enriching it, we are basically uh, concentrating our target microorganism from the water um, by using micro bubbles. So you can enrich the sample after this or directly apply for lamp reaction, but um, the possibility of detecting it, your target will be much better if you can apply enrichment stage. Since our initial market is uh, agriculture and food safety related markets. Um, we do not uh, deal with much uh, human disease, but since coronavirus is um, such a hot topic, so I included this slide. Uh, this method is developed by Aiken Chemical and it's called uh, Pure Method. It is developed for uh, sputum sample for TB testing. So collect a sputum sample, heat up for 95 degree for five minutes and push through this uh, syringe. And at the end, it, the DNA will be purified and it's ready to apply for lamp reaction. I mean, I've used this uh, preparation kit and it's really easy to use. So uh, I thought it might be worth to uh, introduce, but uh, my favorite overall sample preparation technique is actually FDA card for even plant, water, blood sample, uh, anything works really good on FDA card and it's inexpensive. So for closing, uh, LAMP is ultra fast molecular diagnostic technology which requires uh, low energy to perform. I think it's really important to develop effective protocols to utilize these available technology. PCR is very flexible and robust too, uh, but the energy requirement is really high. So, and some people reduce the reaction volume uh, for PCR and it may decrease the energy requirement, but it's spreading the gap between sample volume and reaction volume. So I don't think miniaturized PCR reaction 
is not a practical. Since lamp has robust reaction, and I think it can be used uh, as a strong screening tool uh, prior to perform PCR confirmation. Uh, this coronavirus outbreak definitely show that we should have more close to patient diagnostic technology. Uh, testing is not cure, but it can activate proper treatment and action quickly and eventually minimize the spread and damage to the health and economy. Uh, thank you.